All right. Welcome, everybody. It is AV Summit Day 3. Uh, we are here with Chris from Hisense and FOMO's back. What is up, I'm everybody? Back. I'm back. Yeah. What's up? That's how's it going, Chris? Hey, how's it going, guys? Glad to be here. Yeah, man. Glad to have you. And um, I just want to mention to everybody who are who doesn't know, you know, Hisense is our platinum sponsor. So yay for whoop, that. Whoop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Yeah, great intro, by, by the way. I know Angela loves it. Do, 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 do. And let's give Chris a quick hello. This is Chris Miller, Product Marketing Manager for Hisense US Corporation. And I've been talking to Chris at length about Hisense's amazing jump from TVs to something that I think needs to be addressed, but isn't being addressed, which is what do you do when you have an 85 inch TV and you want to go to 120, but you don't want to deal with a projector. I didn't know that was a thing because I've never thought about going to 120 or even 100. But then I was at the shootout in New York City with uh, <laughs> Techno Dad and we sat there. And I was thinking that 100 inch doesn't look that large from 10 feet away. I think I'm, I'm missing out on something. So with that intro, uh, Chris, can you tell us a bit about oh, how do you guys come up with this? Where is this coming from, this laser TV business? Sure. Hey, at, at Hisense, we think that laser TV is the future of large screen entertainment. Mm -hmm. And you're exactly right. There's a, there's a gap in the market where you can get a 75 inch pretty, pretty much anywhere at a really banging price. You step up to 85 inch, you start increasing your dollar value a little bit. But then when you want to go bigger than 85, where do you go, right? Jumping from a TV to a projector is, it's something that a lot of people just aren't comfortable doing. Projection is just so different. And so Hisense, back in 2014, we started coming up with this concept of, let's bridge the best of what TV has to offer with some projection technology so that we can get really big screen sizes without necessarily having to break the bank to get there. So that's where we introduced our first laser TV back in 2014. And here we are six, seven product generations later um, in 2021 with the, the release of our L9. And um, we got 100 and 120 inch. And this thing's win winning awards. And it's got all the modern features uh, that you expect in a TV that's released this year. And we got a lot of exciting things in the hopper coming in the future. Now, I'm so excitement is one thing if you're familiar with Hisense, but not many people are. And this is why I want to bring in what you guys did in conjunction with this introduction of the laser TV, because wait a minute, this is not a coincidence. You're introducing something people are not used to, which is a projector that's more like a TV and the hundred days, no regrets. My understanding is if they get this new projector laser TV, ultra short throw, and it isn't what they expect it to be, they have a hundred days to try it out. Can you go into what led to this hundred day, no regrets program, which no other TV maker has. So I have to say, you guys, <laughs> unbelievable. Where did this come from? Yeah, so I'm, 2021 has been a really cool year for Hisense, especially on the marketing side and on the brand side. You know, we've got Joel McHale as a brand ambassador. We've been working with Dwayne Wade um, for the last year or so. Uh, what we wanted to do at the beginning of the year as we introduced our new lineup is say, let's get real. Like people want a TV that's great, but they don't want to break the bank to get there. They don't necessarily want to pay a premium, but they still want to get the premium features. So that's what we did. Re we released our Let's Get Real campaign and said, look, we make great TVs with great features at incredible price points. And we released those. And then phase two of this entire campaign was, look, let's take it to the technical reviewers. We're saying as high sense that we've got great TV. What do the reviewers say? FOMO, you've released, I don't know how many videos on your <laughs> high sense reviews, right? And there's a bunch of other creators that have done the same. And they're saying pretty pretty darn positive things about our premium ULED lineup, um, as well as, as our laser TV. So this, the 100 Day No Regrets, is like the culmination of both of those things. It's, it's phase three of this campaign. Look, we make great TVs. We think so. The reviewers are saying that they're great, too. What's to stop you from giving it a whirl? We're going to give you 100 days in home. Take it, take it for a test run. If you don't love it, no harm, no foul. We'll take it back, hundred percent refund, and um, wow. move on to something else. That that actually is pretty amazing. Hundred days, it, isn't it? Yeah, you get you get over three months to try it. 
Yeah. yeah. And, and now you can, you can keep it through the Super Bowl, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. That's a great <laughs> idea. Yeah. I, I, I didn't say that, but uh, that reminds me, is is there a, a time period? When does this 100-day thing, is it all year? Uh, what's the expiration or the opportunity, the opportunity of the window of opportunity for our uh, viewers to say, hey, I want to try this out. Can I do it on Black Friday? What's the deadline to buy it and get 100 days? So this campaign launched a little over a month and a half ago, and we're actually coming up against a hard deadline. It's the end of October. Okay. Now, there's some there's some internal talks that we're, we're seeing a lot of success with this. We're getting lots of great consumer feedback. And you know what? People aren't actually returning the TV. So this is doing exactly what we <laughs> hoped it would. And so <laughs> right. we're, we're hopeful, fingers crossed. Um, maybe this is something that we can continue with. Yeah. So, a uh, quick question: When does the 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 when does day one start? Does it when 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 the TV arrives? When you place the order? How does that work? I'm yeah, sure it's, people it's want to know. The day that you take your order, that you that you place your order at you place the, the order. Okay. Retailer. Yeah. Got it. And, well, so let's say people now have this hundred day opportunity. They hear about this large TV, but the complaint is, well, projector. I don't have light controlled room. My room is not dark. I got drapes and curtains and windows. I'm in the kitchen. I have this lot, great room where most modern homes, everything is one giant room, right? So my understanding is the trichroma laser technology you're putting out on this TV we're talking about today, the L9G, is super bright. Can we go a little bit into not the hardcore specs, but the specs that matter? And I think the specs that matter to me, this 100-inch is... The surface is hard. It puts out 3,000 lumens. And in a bright room, you're able to see this. Is this how you designed it? What, what is your uh, design objective for the 100-inch daylight screen? I want to try that one first. Start with that. Sure. I mean, if, so if you don't buy a flagship TV from one of the manufacturers, you're looking at peak luminance somewhere in the anywhere from 300 nits up to, I don't know, call it 700, 800 nits. And that's that's what a lot of people they've they've usually got a TV like that in their house. And that's exactly what laser TV is going to do. It's going to look and behave just like one of those TVs. Now, this year, we're seeing TVs push a thousand nits, fifteen hundred nits. We're seeing we're hearing about OLEDs going to break a thousand in the near future. These, these are that flagship level. Um, that's that's not exactly what this is. This is your your standard run of the mill. If you've got an LCD or LED TV in your room and you're thinking, hey, maybe I can go bigger, then this is going to give you that same picture quality as as an LED TV. Now, in this image, this is a bright room. That's the L9G that we're talking about. It's putting out an image that looks like doesn't look like a projector because I've seen a projector in a bright room. It does not look like that. So obviously this is from your materials. You have it, Chris. Have you put it in a room like this? Is this what your our customers, your customers, the people that are looking at this TV, are they, is this what they're going to expect from the daylight TV? Um, yeah, I mean, it's made for a bright room here. I'm we're sharing a a video here this is this is taken no post processing this is straight out of the camera you can see this is a oh, well yeah. room there's there's the l9 that's playing that's what, it's this so is your think. room i'm looking at the back of your wall it's the same wall right is this yeah, the right? same room yeah that's yeah. crazy yeah that's the setup here so i mean it looks like a tv doesn't it <laughs> Yeah, yeah we ha actually have that video on your virtual booth as well so for the attendees if you just scroll down to the bottom of the page you'll see the lights off and lights on demo there too. So if you mm -hmm. want to see that again. Yeah, so a, lo a lot of the magic of the reason this works is that screen, right? There's a lot of engineering that goes into that screen. I've got a, um, we've got like eight optical layers in that screen that you hang up on the wall. Okay. It's made to catch the light from the projector at a very specific angle and then reflect it back out to the viewer at a very specific angle. Now, let's that, stop at catching the light and reflecting it. When we spoke about this screen, it can also catch a ball and bounce it back. So you're saying that you know, young kids, and we, oh, we all do, 
they th she threw a ball and it bounced off the screen. There is no other screen that can do that. So what kind of screen is this that you're allowing your kids to play handball against it? Well, this is what we call our ALR daylight screen, right? So it's meant for the mm -hmm. bright room. And the, and the thing that's really unique about this one versus any other type of projector screen you've probably ever seen before is it has a, a hard first surface on it. So you can actually bounce something off of it. It's, it's really resilient to the environment, even more so than, honestly, your LCD or definitely more uh, a, lot, a lot stronger than your, your flat panel TV. Now... A lot of people don't realize when they get a projector screen, it is fragile. So this is why I thought it was important when I first heard that this is bright. One of the things that then made me think is, okay, well, what about people in rooms that do have light control and their kids are banned from the room, so to speak? Do you have a screen for more serious movie watchers? And what's the difference? Like you're upgrading the picture quality, I assume, by taking away some of that durability. Can you go into the other screen options? So the 100 inch comes in two types, the hard screen that you just talked about, bright room, we saw that image. What about in the more serious cinema enthusiast room? Yeah, so we've got a second screen that we call our ALR, ambient light rejecting cinema screen. So its reflective properties are a little bit different than that hard screen. Yes, it has kind of a it has more of a soft surface to it, um, and it has a lower gain, which means it doesn't reflect the light, um, bright light, quite as um, quite as much. It doesn't amplify the brightness from the projector so much. It more naturally reflects that light back out. So what that gives us is it lowers the overall black level. It also gives us a much wider viewing angle. And it, it um, the colors really start to pop and we get beautiful edge focus all the way across the entire projection. Here's a great question <laughs> that I wanted to know what the answer is. On the hard surface, well, if they're going to throw stuff at us, sometimes it's not a ball, <laughs> but it's natural artwork from small humans. <laughs> Have you tried cleaning it? Did your daughter throw peanut butter on it? Is it cleanable? Because if it was a real screen, it's kind of... It's over, right? When peanut butter is on, it's gone. Uh, what's what's the durability, cleanliness? How do they take care of the hard screen? Hard screen. Yeah, it's got it's got a hard resin surface on the on the front of it. So yeah, you probably don't want to use abrasive chemicals, but you can definitely take mm -hmm. water and a and a chamois or something and and clean it off. Sure. Is the surface really is it is the surface kind of like have a texture or is it a smooth surface? No, it, it's smooth. It's smooth. Oh. It's it's kind of like if you you knock on your window or you knock on your desk, it it has that kind of hard resistance feel to it. It feels and it looks a lot like a flat panel TV. Huh. Now, one of the things that I thought when I was going over the specs, the qualities, and Joe and I have this, you know, you sent it to us to review. We haven't finished even <laughs> setting it up yet, but it was important to understand what we were getting into. And I think this is suddenly for us and our viewers, a game changer in that, well, first it's a hundred inch, but to get to 120, it's an extra $500. So I didn't think we mentioned the MSRP. So we're asking, well, how much is this amazing uh, laser TV, right? It's not technically a projector, it's ultra short throw. $5,500, right, for the hundred inch. Yeah, but I like that it's, 120 inch is six thousand dollars so wow. if you could fit the 120 inch but this is not the hard screen right this Correct. is the okay are you planning a hard screen 120 inch now, now that i'm thinking about <laughs> it maybe is that you know, in the works it would be great but there's some real logistical issues you're dealing with think about mm. packaging that the box oh, right. thing is going to come in is probably not going to fit in any normal doorway it's not going to okay. go down your stairwell yeah. to your basement, right? Okay. There's some physical limitations that probably make a 120-inch hard screen or a hard okay. flat panel TV probably okay. pretty impractical. So $6,000 for the 120-inch, it's it's a fixed distance. It's ultra short throw and includes the screen. And then the audio is EARC. So if you plug this TV, it has its own native apps. Is that correct? It is a smart TV. Yeah, so this runs the uh, the latest Android TV platform. And eARC means lossless out into your audio system. But if you don't have an audio system, it's a 40-watt audio. And 
you know, we were off air and you're saying, no, this is about as good as a typical small sound bar. Is that how you describe the audio that comes inside this projector? Yeah, it's definitely as good as uh, a $200 sound bar or something, right? But it's also okay. got Dolby Atmos post-processing on it too. So you get a little bit of that spatial sound. I mean, we've done, we're not just throwing speakers in there just to say we have speakers. <laughs> we've also done a lot of designing around trying to make this a, as turnkey as possible, as easy as possible to get a massive screen that sounds pretty dang good okay. out of the box. Now, you're saying it's easy. So Joe and I, we consider ourselves the worst handyman, but we're going to try this. We're, we're going to <laughs> speak for yourself. Uh, I don't know, man. I've seen Joe install speakers on his ceiling. So. Okay. I took it yeah. back. I have a wide collection of power tools <laughs> that, that never get used. That never get used, <laughs> right? I see it on sale Black Friday and it's still here from last Black Friday. So I'll bring it over. But for those that either don't have time or, you know, they're cut their hands doing Ikea and they swear they'll never do it again. You have a nationwide uh, list of installers that if they bought this anywhere, they could also get installers to their home. Is that correct, ah. Chris? Yeah, that's right. And we've actually been running a promo. It's actually coming up to a close as well. Right now, if you buy the L9 from any of the authorized retailers, you can request a free professional installation from our national network of installers. Oh, that's well, great. Wait. That's great. Free installation. I, I, didn't, I didn't know that. I was going to say. <laughs> I'm gonna have, Value Electronics is coming up. Uh, in the afternoon, in a few hours, and they're one of your retailers. I heard they yep. tell Robert, Robert, are you the one volunteering to go out there <laughs> and do this? That's awesome. So free yeah. installation. Okay. Yeah, I, I need to take advantage of that. Now I'm thinking, okay, I don't care if Joe is an awesome handyman. I'm, I might want a professional. You know, you know who's going to show up? It's going to be Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be Brandon. Yeah, right. It'll be Brandon. <laughs> uh, and then for those that just joined us, I think the game changer on this laser TV is that the 100 inch comes as a hard surface that's bright for bright rooms. And one of the use cases that Joe and I were talking about was, so if you're in this kitchen that's around where this daylight screen is, you could turn around, watch it, go back to cooking, see the kitchen, the TV, it's all in this large room, but the brightness of the room does not, or the ambient light, it doesn't have the same effect on this screen as it would any other projector, right? That's how it's designed. and you could try it out, and if it isn't what you thought it was, you have 100 days to turn on the lights, turn off the lights. Is that how you intended that 100 days to be used with this TV? Yeah, I mean, this this is new, right? Ultra short throw projection laser TV. It hasn't been around that long. When you when you say TV, people actually don't really like that we call it laser TV. It's still that new. That term really right. hasn't caught on yet. But the idea is that this is TV in every sense of the word. But we're just using rather than LED backlighting, we're using a laser as the light source. But it's got all it's got all the same features. So yeah, as you're as you're deciding, trying to figure out whether or not this is something that you want to believe in, you want to bring into your home and and have a, a huge, massive, immersive screen somewhere in your home, we encourage you to give it a try. Go to go to Value Electronics, request your free install. We're trying to make it as easy as we can. Keep it till the Super Bowl. And if you don't love it, then uh, then we'll take it back. Now, Chris has a great question. Although it says ultra short throw, everyone's short throw is different. How many inches is from the wall? Does it have to be uh, from your the unit, the actual unit from the screen? So on, for a 100 inch size, you're you're sitting at roughly 11 inches off of the wall. Off so the wall. for mo most TV stands, you're 16, 18, 20 inch depth. More than likely, you're going to be pulling that TV stand off the wall. A, at least a few inches okay um and then on the 120 inch size again because we're fixed focus you're going to pull that back about another two and a half additional right. inches mm -hmm. to scale up to 120. that makes sense and what i wanted to mention now is since we're talking laser tv this is the first we've had obstacles getting tvs to even get close to 90 percent bt 2020 it's not even close to being there. And only a triple laser, RGB red, green, and blue, right? Each of those lasers will then allow a TV or display, in this case, your laser TV, to get to over 100% BT2020. But I'm happy with 100% BT2020. So this laser TV, Trichroma L9G, it is BT2020 100%. Is that wow. is that your understanding, Chris? 
Yes, absolutely. And yeah, BT 2020, 100% coverage is a bit of a flex, right? Because how much content out there has been mastered for that? But you know very, what? Very what it actually does is that means that when we're talking DCI P3 or um, any of the other color standards, we're extremely accurate. We're, we exceed the, uh, the standards there. So you can get a fantastic picture. And then what you've also got here is a little bit of future proofing because content is always going to be remastered and mm -hmm. new content is yeah. going to come out that's going to start taking taking uh, and adopting some of the new standards. Great question from Steve Romero. What is the life expectancy of your laser? Yeah, this this is a huge thing. Uh, the quick answer is 25,000 hours. A yeah. lot of that's that's a huge concern for projection technology. Wow. Typical LED lamps, you're looking at I don't know anywhere between yeah, Joe's holding up three fingers. I was going to say four to six thousand hours before right. you see that brightness really start to taper off. Yeah, a lot of times it's two to three thousand. Mm. Yeah, so twenty five thousand hours. I don't know. That's like four movies a day for thirteen years or something. You can you can do the math. That's it's a very long time. Now this is another good one. Very practical question from Tim. Any pictures of how it comes off the truck to get an idea of size of packaging? So I have the screen. Uh, rolled up as it came off the truck, Tim. It's pretty long. Was it seven feet, eight feet long, something like that? I sent Joe a picture because we're gonna have to carry it <laughs> or into the minivan, right? right. It's not I have, heavy. It's not heavy. I have it's a just... feeling FOMO and Joe won't get to this until like 22. You know, like sometime in January, you guys are finally are get you, around. I, to I, I it. Are you gym? kidding me? I can't wait to get to this. It's just right after the AV summit. I'm just, you know. I'm consumed with this, but right afterwards, FOMO, bring that right. over. We'll do it. Hey, I'll, go, I'll go visit my family. I'll come help you guys do it. Yes. <laughs> Fred has a great question. Can you game on this TV? So Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding is it's HDMI 2.1, and the plug also says 4K 120, and the processing chips are 4K 120. However, the DLP maxes out at 4K 60, right? Sure. Can you tell, tell the gamers out there what to expect? Because this massive TV, can it, can you game? Yeah, right now there's a hardware limitation on the uh, the, the DLP chip that's um, that reflects the light. Its max refresh rate at 4K is 60 hertz. Now, if you take that down to 1080, you can get up to 240 hertz. And we're looking at maybe trying to enable that, like a, a really low latency or a high refresh rate mode in the future. That's not on the product now. And we're not sure if it will come to the current product or maybe it'll be future models. But yes, you can expect 4K 60. I play PS5 on on my L9 and it is it's unreal <laughs> playing on something that's that big. Right. And what about so I would imagine like input lag is not an issue with this projection. No, I mean our ours is rated right around 30 to 35 milliseconds. Okay. So this is not necessarily your your competitive uh, FPS shooter type rig. You're probably mm -hmm. going to stick to your desktop that gets one millisecond response sure. time or better. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, adventure, action, RPG, multiplayer, all that stuff is it's fantastic. And here's a question. Will, will these screens allow for in-wall theater speakers? I guess the, the question is, is the screen itself, can you put audio behind the screen, transparent, acoustically transparent? What is the plans for that? Yeah, currently these screens are not acoustically transparent. Um, they have, like I said, eight layers. There's a lot of crazy things we have to do with the optics. And so the more and more layers you add, it's going to get more and more difficult to get that and sound. The less you want to like poke holes in it, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, so the suggestion is to, at, at the height that you mount the screen, you're probably going to try to put your center channel either right below that screen. And the, the laser is not going to, the, the projector is not going to catch your center channel if you mount it to the wall back below the screen. Right, right. And a reminder for everyone who just joined is, if they get the TV, installation is free until when? Because I think that may be a loan, <laughs> the reason to get it and try it out for 100 days. You know, the, the, uh, it's October 31st. Okay. We've been running it for since, basically okay. since we launched the product back at the beginning of September. Okay. We've had fantastic uptake. Um, scores and scores of people are are buying and getting free install of this. But yeah, that comes up at the end of this month. Okay. So if you're going to buy, get it done now and then get your request in before the end of the month. That installation, when it's not free, 
um, we have a contracted rate. It's right around five hundred dollars. Okay, so it's not that bad at all, actually. Yeah, or in, the installation is really not that bad, but five hundred dollars is five hundred dollars, right? Right, for sure, right. for sure. Well, now suddenly that free install means a lot. <laughs> I was thinking, oh, you know, I'll pay the guy forty dollars, but I guess I'm not stopping by the Home Depot. Okay, so I mentioned this the uh, Wisa because you guys are oh. talking about speakers, right? Oh yeah, Wisa. Yeah. yeah, we should talk about Wisa. Is it? Does it have Wisa? What? What is? What is that? Can you yeah, so that? wireless speaker and audio is a, a pretty cool new standard coming to the home theater space. It's a it's a really nice step up from a sound bar. And it's a nice halfway point between going to a full blown home theater that's all wired and you've got your AVR and all that, all the good stuff that you can spend, I don't know, five times as much than you on that stuff than you do on your on your projector. So yeah, WISA means that you can you basically plug in a little dongle into the back of an HDMI port, the eARC port on the back of the, the laser TV console. And you can have a, a wireless 5.1, 5.2 system. Um, that you set up and literally I, I did mine recently and it took me 15 minutes. So I went from just the 40 watt speaker in the laser TV, which it does sound pretty good. It lacks maybe a little bit of that low end, but then I brought in my 5.1 WISO system that I have a sub and all, all of a sudden you start to really get that movie theater immersion. Here's a quick question from Rick. Now you set up yourself or you did it how is it out of the box in terms of calibration? Because does installation include calibration? Calibrating a TV is one thing. Calibrating projectors is a whole other thing. How does it look out of the box? How much user adjustment is required before it looks as good as what we saw on, on your display when you were showing us? Honestly, the, the, the thing that we were just looking at uh, back at the top of our meeting, that hasn't been calibrated. <laughs> that, I think that was out of the box and it was probably the uh, theater day mode. I think there's seven or eight uh, image presets in there. And then every mm -hmm. single one of them is customizable and you can you can set and create your own um, image presets. But yeah, out of the box, I mean, Hisense is a TV company, right? right. And then projectors kind of started to come into the mix. So we've been doing TVs for a long time, 10 years in the US, but much, much, much longer than that in other markets around the world. So calibration and right out of the box is extremely important. That's one of the reasons why we pair the projector with a screen is because we can guarantee what that picture quality is going to be. It's if you don't get a screen and you go buy an ultra short throw from somewhere else, one, you're probably going to end up spending a lot more buying that screen. But two, you don't, you don't actually have any guarantee that, that projector and that screen are going to work as well as they could. High right. sense. We, we can guarantee what you're going to get. Like you're going to get the optimal the to go picture. Get. Exactly. Right. right. I remember I asked you before, I know you have the 100 inch and the 120. If I decide later, if I get the 100 and decide later, you know what? I, I think I could fit the 120. Would I have to replace the entire projector? Do I just, how does that work? Yeah. So this is, it's a TV, just like a TV, right? If you've got a 65 inch TV and a 75 inch TV, do you just pull on the corners and then it gets bigger? No, you get a new set, right? So if you I, buy the I tried that, it did not work. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> right. So you buy the hundred inch like I did. Um, and I went, you know, I can fit a 120. So I moved my hundred inch to a different room. And then I brought the 120 in where the hundred inch was. So Kids no room you, gets an upgrade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These yeah. are, they're fixed fixed focal distance, they're designed and optimized for specific sizes so that we can guarantee that picture quality. So speaking of upgrades and our enthusiast crowd, Gadgetry thinks, you know, if only I could put a Lumigen on this projector, would it be insane? Do you plan to try to throw in Lumigen? Mm. Does it need to be designed for this? What are your thoughts on getting the picture even better? You know, I, that's there's always a relentless pursuit of trying to in, uh, improve PQ, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and it's getting better and better. Every single manufacturer that that puts their product into the fray and says, "Hey, I've got one too." Um, this the market competition is going to drive and create a better and better product for the consumer, and that's that's what we're trying to do. Now, what you have now is a hundred inch cinema screen and a one twenty cinema screen. So let's go apples to apples. Is the only difference size, or are there any other picture quality differences when they go to 120 besides just a larger screen? 
the biggest thing is just the the feeling of immersion. No, the picture quality is entirely consistent across the board. The 100, 120, it doesn't matter. They're both, the projection consoles themselves are optimized for those sizes. There's different calibrations that are being done at the factory level for 100 versus 120 inch. The screen, wow. 100 inch screen is, I don't know, three and a half times bigger than a 55 inch TV. 120 inch screen is almost five times bigger mm. than right. a 55 inch TV. So yeah, that sense of immersion is the thing that really changes. You know, Joe had an image earlier when we were doing, and you were there, we were doing the 83 inch OLED versus short throw. And he had a comparison from an 83 OLED inch to 120. I was like, I need me a 120. <laughs> I didn't realize it goes from this, to like this, like, holy, no wonder people go into projector. But I have a hard time going to projector only because you, you need so much of that, get the right screen. But if you have one packaged with it, my next question would then be, the brightness is 3,000 lumens on the 100. But then on the, oh, yeah, that's it. And then on the 120, are you still getting 3,000 lumens? Does that drop off at all? No, so the, the lumens is the rating from the projector, right? So nothing about the projector has changed with its light output. Okay. The, the big thing that you can, bright, brightness is its visual perception, right? It's a biological response. Brightness, perceived brightness may change based on the reflected material. So that, that's why we've got a daylight screen with a 1.2 gain. That image just pops. It looks really, really bright. The cinema screen, um, honestly, it still looks fantastic. It just doesn't quite get the luminance that you're getting measured in nits from that daylight screen. But either way, 100, 120 inch um, on that cinema screen with a 0.4 gain, you're still well north of 350 nits or something. And I've seen measurements that are as high as five and 600 nits um, with some content. Right. And, and that's what someone's asking. Well, what about nits? So it d really depends on the content. Can the con is the content putting out 600 nits? Are you watching SDR? But let's say you're watching HDR. It's not a brightness HDR powerhouse. What I think the use case is, you just want a large screen immersive TV because most projectors, or even some of the best projectors, even a dark room, we're not talking HDR. We're just talking impact from the immersion, correct? So. Does Hisense have plans to make this more HDR friendly? Well, that takes us to the future of laser TV. I should ask you, what are your plans for future products related to the whole laser TV product line? What is Hisense's intent for this whole laser TV thing? Yeah, so I mentioned earlier, earlier endless pursuit of improving picture quality, right? So yes, better HDR performance, better dynamic, better dynamic range generally, better black levels. Um, smaller console designs, tighter throw ratios, um, better focus, better brightness uniformity, easier to assemble screens, um, maybe new audio features, definitely going to stay up with the, the latest in the modern ports, better integrations to smart home ecosystems and um, home automation systems. There's, there's a lot to look forward to in this category. Dude, on this TV. Dune. I, As, this may sure. be an excuse, right? <laughs> an excuse to give this TV to watch Dune. There it is. I actually watched the, uh, a little bit of that yesterday. Chana, I know you did also. I know you're an yeah. OLED guy, but man, that's one of those movies like on a projector. I have see to admit, the yeah. huge image. Oh, I don't know. I, I think I it's was a different experience. It, actually, I was watching it at a high sense, 65 inch at my friend's house. Uh, this is the one that I picked up last year. And I was thinking, wow, this TV without any of the TVs around it actually looks legit. It was, I think, last year's H9G. And so I'm watching it and I'm thinking, the HDR looks good, you know, just image, but if only it was bigger. Because I know, you know, you've already sent the 100 inch over. I kept sending myself, we're all gathered around. We're about eight, nine feet away and it's a 65 inch. And I kept on saying, I know now if it was bigger, it would fill up to here and i could not unsee what i saw at the projector shootout and i think this is a problem for all of you You have to keep in mind once you bring this projector home to try out 100 days you may not be satisfied with one or two things but you're not going to unsee that size so you're going to end up upgrading to a more expensive projector 
not returning the 100 inch, <laughs> no, maybe getting the 120, but you're not returning this 100 inch to get a 75 or an 85. I think that's what we're going to see them doing is they're going to get this TV. They're going, oh, you know, the HDR is so. This is what we do. Oh, it's a little, the blacks are not as deep, right? We talked about how the blacks can I get perfectly black. It is a projector, but you're going to return it. You're going to have this smaller TV with perfect blacks. You're like, something's missing. So Chris, <laughs> ha have you experienced this? Because you have it. I know you own the TV, but you also have the smaller ones. What happens when you look at this TV and you see the picture quality differences? What do you think is the size to quality immersion? That trade-off is going to be real for many people in the $5,000 price range. For sure. So, I, I mean, I've got LED TVs, I've got OLED, and I've got projection in my house, right? I'm, I'm one of the lucky guys that I can, I can afford this and I can bring it to my family and, and it's great. And I, we watch different content in different places. But at the end of the day, when I want to relax, I go to the 120-inch because... That, that can drown out the dogs and the neighbor's lawnmowers and the other thing and, and the kids being crazy. Like that's something that I can just, it, it envelops you. It's, I say it kind of has like, it has gravity because it's so big that it draws you into it. Now, if I'm going to watch something more casual or, or I want to really take, uh, take advantage of like the latest Dolby Vision stuff that's being uh, put out on uh, Apple TV Plus or something like that. Then yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to my TV so I can really see that dynamic HDR um, mastering of of the content. And and, I'm gonna, and you said uh, when you game also, yeah, for gaming, for competitive hardcore gaming, don't you have a a monitor for that too? Yeah, so it's mean, like I'm different gonna, purposes, right? Right. I've got a, right. a gaming monitor. So again, I'm lucky that I can bounce around to the different technology, but it's all it's use case. But for right. me, once I went from my 65 inch TV that I had in my main uh, media room up to a 120 inch laser TV, no way would I ever go back to something that small again. And now for practical uses, this is a TV for everyone wondering, <laughs> is this just a projector monitor? And with all TVs is Android. Can you turn off the advertising? Because we know Android comes with it. How intrusive the advertising, this is the use case that people are worried about. Yeah, I mean, it's Android TV, right? So you're going to get what Android TV gives you. Um, but there's settings to turn everything off. I went, I went ahead and I immediately did all that. I don't, I don't like That's the intrusive right. stuff either, right? Yep. Sports. Or that is above the other one. Above. Sports. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Uh, have you had a chance to watch college football? Any kind of sport? Good any question. limitations watching? Because I would love to watch just football games. College football season is, is hard right now. What are your thoughts with sports? Well, I, let, let's let's see how you respond to this, FOMO. I'm in I'm in Atlanta, so go Braves, right? I know you're out. That's right. You're out on the West Coast, so you're the Dodgers took took a hit. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? No, I mean, sports looks great. Broadcast TV, obviously, it's not 4K, it's not HDR, it's not Dolby Vision, right? It's probably 720p. And, um, you know, at in our in filmmaker mode, 24 FPS, I mean, that stuff looks great. If you look at the shootout on our scorecard, we, we beat the other brands that were there in that competition. Sports, the same way. Our performance, better than, it, better than the others in that competition. It's, I think it's probably one of the, top three things that you're going to do with the laser TV. And I like getting an HDMI splitter and then I can put four different sources up on the screen at the same time. So I basically uh, got, whoa, 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 whoa. got my hey, four hey, games at once. <laughs> Look at them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ju just like we are right here, right now in our video feed, we got four uh -huh. frames, four sources. I mean, giving them I ideas. Mean, you know, my wife wow. is a huge football fan. We have uh, the Game Mix channel for NFL Sunday tickets. So we've got eight games on at once. <laughs> There's also a second channel with like four games as well. Um, the, you know, big miss by DirecTV is you can't select which games are on there. So that's a great idea. Oh, a little four-way splitter. Yep. That's great. Uh, 120 inch. Yeah. I, yeah. I and I make a, that. Each game gets its own 55 inch screen at that point. Wow. <laughs> Can I make a recommendation for folks who are trying yeah. to decide between the 120 and the 100? My recommendation is if you can fit the 120, try that first. Because I think, mm -hmm. you know, there's it, a big difference, right? 
So I would say if you can fit it, if you know that it's not going to fit, then of course don't do it. But if you're trying to decide between the two, I'd say pay the extra and get the 120. If, so here's so, the, here's the thing. 120 inches is a very large screen, right? Mm-hmm. But if you live, if your room has an eight foot ceiling, 120 inch will fit. It'll, 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 it'll physically fit. Now, yeah. just, then then it becomes a, a depth of your room, right? If if you've got 120 inch on your wall and you're only sitting seven yeah, distance, feet from it, yes. that might be a that might be a little overkill. But if you've got a room that's a 10 by 10 and you've got an eight foot ceiling, 120 is it's pretty amazing in that kind of space. Do so it. here's a great question, I think, Do for it. many who are kind of adventurous <laughs> about using this TV's amazing audio system. I mean, 40 watts isn't bad, right? right. Can you plug it? Can you plug input into the TV and turn that into a center channel? Or is that something Hisense is planning if you can't do it right now? That's that's an R&D. We can't do it right now. That okay. is absolutely a feature really? that I'm looking forward to bringing to the product. That's, I mean, because that that is the one big thing because yeah. um, that, that ultra short throw projector is in the perfect spot for a center channel. So, um, and I know like companies such as like Salamander have been um, creating cabinets where the uh, the UST will just kind of sit right in the top and then right underneath there's a spot for a center channel. So that's actually a great, great addition to any mm-hmm. kind of, uh, you know, laser TV or ultra short throw right. uh, projector. Just an system. input, just convert that good, because you have good speakers that you invested in, let people plug it and use it. Here's something that, is coming out in the near future, ATSC 3.0. Will the laser, will this laser TV do local Steve to local Stevie stations in the new ATSC 3.0 format? The current the current model does not support 3.0. Okay. Um, like I said, as we continue, as the new features, as new standards start to become more mainstream, we're, we'll absolutely bring those features to the product. And for those of you who are thinking ATSC 3.0, we're going to start seeing tuners anyway. I mean, m- most of this stuff, you can get a tuner probably for around $100, a little bit less. I think there are one or two out there right now, but it's kind of the premium end. But give it a year or two, stick a tuner in, and you're good to go. Now, now that said, this TV does have a TV tuner. It's just the old. Oh, tuner. okay. Yes. So a, a regular tuner. Great. Can I can I share the ports yeah. here with you? Let Please. Me... Yeah. Yeah. Let's check it out. Pull this up here real quick. You let me know if you see that. There you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. So what we have is the uh, Ethernet service and digital audio out, regular audio out, and you have three HDMI ports. Is that correct? Can correct. you zoom in a little bit, Chris? Um, yeah. So it's Sorry a tiny bit. That. Yeah. There, there, there we go. go. Okay. There we go. So you have three HDMI, three HDMI ports now. Ports two and three say 4K 120, but we know that technically the it will not display the 120, but it is eARC and 2.1 compliant. And then port number one is 4K 60. I think that's good. And the USB, is that just for power? What is that USB port for? Yeah, maybe that's your media player that needs um, the five volt power off that okay. USB. And someone also asked Chris whether Hisense has a disc player that comes with it or a matching disc. What what accessories can people look forward to? If they get this TV, are there anything else that you'd recommend they get with the Hisense? You know, the biggest thing I would say is platform. If you're not a fan of Android TV, it's not part of the ecosystem of your house, you're not really in the Google ecosystem, then yeah, bring your, bring your Apple TV or bring your Roku or... Um, I would say media device would probably be the biggest thing that you'd want to you'd want to accessorize this thing with. Okay. And then the next thing would be, of course, audio. I mean, if you're really serious about home theater and you want to turn this into your your movie room, your theater room, then of course you're going to want to invest in in your sound as well. And Joe can tell you all about that. Mm-hmm. Yes. And the practical question width and height of the 120 inch. I'm sure you have it memorized, Chris. But I don't know let's see. You- uh oh. No, I've actually got a. I've got a. You gra- gotta look it up. I've got a graphic handy. Let me see if I oh, can get. Oh, perfect! It. Yeah, I'll right. put it up. We'll share. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you guys who are asking about the width and height of the 120, you're on. That means that you are seriously thinking for an extra 500 bucks, I'm going to 120 yeah. inch. Start oh. with that, and if you cannot fit it on the wall, 
that's when you go to the hundred days and go to the one hundred. No, dude, the save, 100, save right? these guys the the shipping. <laughs> yeah. They're already hooking you up. All right. So if you know that you're gonna you're gonna if you can fit one twenty, I would say go for one twenty. I don't know. That's just me. So here, here we are. One hundred. Oh, okay. I'm, uh, I'm frantically trying to find my one twenty. Oh, that's the 100. Okay, so if you're looking think 100, guys, that's the 100. And in the meantime, I'm not going to answer this question. Kevin's question is, any tips on improving HDR tone mapping? Absolutely, Kevin. If you have the Panasonic UB820, it does have the tone mapping feature specific to projectors. And so you could choose among the three, four tone mapping optimizations and play around with it. And one of them will perfect the tone mapping that's on any projector, including this one. So if you get it and you feel there's some content you're watching where tone mapping is like, oh, you know, it's a little off. I want something different. Definitely the UB820 will do that. At, we have that. We're going to play with it at Joe's place. So we'll let you know which one is our favorite. Somebody's saying Mad VR. Oh, Mad VR. How much yeah. is Mad VR? Is that I, don't know. I saw it like 9 Gs. It's and only then, 9 uh, Gs. Go with the UB820. Yeah. <laughs> Imogen. <laughs> Zoomagen. Yep. Um, you know, a question while you're looking for that, Chris, if if you can't find it, it's okay. Um, we can always look it up. But I got it. I got it. Yeah. It's somewhere. The, the other question is uh, firmware updates. How do those happen? Yeah. That so is... we're constantly supporting. This is our premium product. So I'm going to have to mm -hmm. share and reshare just so we'd have this. And then I'll sure. get your question here for you. Sorry, everyone watching. Ah, uh, no worries. No worries. You okay. got it. Yeah. So OTA updates are always. Oh, here we go. Um, are always going to happen, right? This is a premium product, and we're doing everything that we can to support it, um, with the best support you can have. So I think mm -hmm. there's already been a couple of OTA updates that have come out since launch, mm -hmm. and um, we'll continue to do that. Hopefully, it won't be just bug fixes either. Hopefully, we'll be bringing some new features um, in the future. So you say OTA is just like. Over the over the, over the, over the air, air. Yeah. it just over the it air. just downloads. Yeah, you'll get a you'll get a prompt and say, "Hey, new new firmware available," and you can download it and install it right there. That's kind and of awesome. And for those who are listening and not seeing, the one twenty inch dimensions are up. It is about one hundred four point six inches across and sixty point four inches above. Pull out your rulers, run to your wall, and see. Yeah, the and, and and one in one. Pretty much one and a half inches uh, in thickness. Okay. So um, yeah, if you can fit a hundred and five um, left and right, sixty-one up and down, then you're good to go for the hundred and twenty inch. I know Chris Wyndham says for those watching on a cell phone, we can't see the dimensions. So, <laughs> so I'm glad you said that, FOMO. Yes. And uh, well, I, I think th this is well. Definitely, I'm very interested in one twenty for. My room, if it's above 12 feet or above 10 feet, 100 inch. So for those wondering, is this too big or small for the room? Generally, I've been recommending that if you're about seven to eight, nine feet away, 77 inch, 85 inches work at above 10 feet. I'm actually looking at 100 inches now. And the only 100 inch TVs out there are either the Samsung Q90A at 15,000 currently, the Sony X92J at 20,000 or the 100 inch laser TV designed to be in a bright room here for $5,500, but I'd go 6,000 for the 120 inch. And that's if you're more than 11 feet away, right? Definitely you should consider that. So any questions that we have left, we're about ready to wrap up, right, Joe? Send yep. everyone to the, where are you going to be, Chris? Yeah. Maybe at your booth or you want to hang out in the lobby to talk to people? Yeah. Why, why don't we go hang out in the, um, Okay. The TV projectors lobby. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll be around. Yeah. I'm I'm kind of cleared by afternoon. So if anyone's got questions, I'm happy to talk to Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Right. All right. So, so let me kind of share this so people, uh, attendees can see what we're talking about here. So just go to the TV and projectors uh, chat room here. I know a lot of people are hanging out in the lobby. If you want to talk to Chris and ask him some questions, this is the place. And, um, also, virtual booth, I want to remind folks that um, tomorrow, what, yes, Thursday, so tomorrow, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., if you want to speak with Chris, uh, more like a business-to-business -business type of deal, you can go here and uh, speak with him. If you have additional questions, you can also ask. But uh, this is their virtual booth. 
with some more info and then those demos that I was talking about with the lights off and lights on. Okay, well, this has been very enlightening, Chris. Thank you so much for coming on board. And yeah. especially has been surprising to me the trajectory of Hisense going from, and I put it here, Walmart special. <laughs> Who's Hisense? And, and now it's like, well, we have 120 inch laser TV, the only one that does BT 2020, 100% or more, 3000 lumens in your living room, hard screen, throw a ball at it, whatever. And it has so many qualities that no other brand has and i'm just waiting for someone else to follow up with this whole laser tv thing but the mm -hmm. big game changer for me is the quality of that screen that hard screen i think is brilliant what you guys thought through i mean that is a whole use case i'm a big use case guy and i cannot yep. imagine a use case that allows you to put this in a playroom where the kids are throwing stuff around <laughs> yeah there's that um don't forget they also have the 100 day in home trial oh, they yes. have the free installation still going on um and uh 500 to go 20 go up 20 inches in size that's pretty remarkable considering a 65 inch oled to an 83 inch oled which isn't a 20 inch difference is like a few thousand dollar difference so yeah just got I'm just going to say that and you know, Techno Dad, you just got yourself an 83 inch OLED, and mm -hmm. I'm thinking you may not want to see this TV because you love that 83 inch. So yeah, I, now I couldn't even put. I don't have a wall to put. put to he put doesn't it have a wall. Uh, yeah, I don't. We, have we tried that. We tried that already, FOMO. Believe yeah, me, yeah, I've tried yeah. to convert him to the projector life. It's just his particular situation. There's no wall. <laughs> There's no wall. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so got to yeah. figure out something. Maybe one yeah. of these days. I'll just have to move. I'm gonna move. For the high sense TV, that's that's there that's, you go. <laughs> get a that's new what this other guy's saying that. too. He's gonna move to fit the 120. <laughs> right, that's it. You're, if you're in Texas, I'm sure you got the room. Okay, so yeah, everyone, head over to the lobby area, the TV and projector. In this case, this is a projector is a TV, and uh, we'll see you there. Yeah. Thank you so much, Chris. I'm Again, sure we'll TV and projector. Soon. Just to make yeah. sure you said lobby, so I want to make sure people oh, yeah, know. Yeah. Go TV to the TV and projector, and projector oh, yes. uh, room. That's right, everybody attending the AV Summit. This is day three. Chris, thank you so much uh, for being here, and he will be answering your questions. Just go to the avsummit.com and then go into chat rooms and then go into the TV and projector section. He will be there. And next up, we have Kaleidoscape and Trinop at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So we got about half an hour break, and we will see you guys there as the journey during the AV Summit continues. Bigger is better. Remember, bigger, <laughs> bigger is, is better. better. All right, well, we'll Thanks, see Chris. you guys in the next one. Chris, do not hit that leaf.